Greetings. This video will compare the capabilities of the US Air Force and the Russian Air Force, a comparison highly relevant today at a time of high geopolitical tensions. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States were considered to unquestionably field the most capable air forces in the world, with no other countries competing at a remotely comparable level. Fighter aircraft from the two countries went head-to-head -head across the world through multiple generations. Today, America and Russia, alongside China, are the undisputed leaders in combat aviation and the two leading exporters of military aircraft. Looking to both sides' main combat aircraft, their fighters and interceptors, these can broadly be divided by weight into five categories. Very light, light, heavy, medium, and super heavy. While the US has a vast numerical advantage, a much larger portion of the Russian fleet comes from higher and heavier classes. A number of factors including cheap oil and cheaper labor to handle operational needs, as well as the need for a long range due to the size of Russian territory, have led it to strongly favor heavyweights. By contrast, the US is the only NATO air force with any heavyweights whatsoever, and even there they are a minority. Russian heavyweights, namely members of the flanker family, are notably larger, have larger radars, and benefit from higher endurances than their American counterparts. The difference in size can be seen when comparing both countries' main fighters side by side, the American lightweight F-16 and the Russian heavyweight Su-27, Su-30. One of the most notable differences is in their range, which forces the US Air Force to rely very heavily on aerial refueling for even medium-range operations. The fact that the flankers carry radars several times as large as the F-16s, and far larger than any Western fighter class, also provides a major advantage in situational awareness. As heavyweights, they can also carry twice as many missiles as light fighters like F-16s. Each new missile added takes a much lower toll on the flanker's range compared to what it would on a lighter fighter class. Beyond fighter jets, for aircraft more specialized in air-to-ground operations, numbers are broadly balanced. The US has an overwhelming advantage in combat drone capabilities, but fields no dedicated strike fighters. Russia has retained general parity and strategic bomber capabilities largely due to its strong emphasis on nuclear deterrence. For total numbers of combat jets, and especially fighter numbers, the US has a clear advantage. If dividing aircraft by generation, the US advantage is significantly greater. Approximately 500 US Air Force fighters are from the new fifth generation, while Russia only fields 10. Although Russia is expected to open three production lines for fifth generation fighters, this will only happen in the 2030s. By that time, China and America will already have sixth-generation fighters in service. Both countries' fifth-generation fighter programs have been highly problematic. The F-22 was ordered cut from production less than four years into service, and has excessive maintenance needs and obsolete avionics. The Su-57 is much less stealthy, and still uses an old fourth-generation engine. Still, by far the most troublesome has been the F-35, which would need its own video just to list the issues with. Although numerous and potentially promising, the fighter today has very limited combat applications. Looking to how new the two fleets are, Russia has made rapid acquisitions over the last decade, allowing it to replace around half its entire fighter fleet. In the US, by contrast, fighters acquired after 2010 are a small minority. All new fighters are considered 4 plus or 5th generation and have 5th generation level avionics. A notable difference in fighter acquisitions is that Russia has acquired a diverse range of fighters from across five different classes since 2011, while the US has focused almost all procurements on the F-35. Russia thus has more different fighter classes in production for its air force than any other country. This has both pros and cons. It means programs cannot benefit from the economies of scale the F-35 does, However, it also mitigates risk of overinvestment in a single program and allows it to field multiple specialist classes for different roles. The two countries have very different advantages in terms of the air to air missiles they deploy. By far the largest, fastest, and longest range missile deployed by either side is the Russian R 37M. These are deployed primarily by the country's super heavy MiG 31 interceptors. The understrength Su-57 unit deploys the R-77M, which also outranges its American counterparts. The bulk of the fleet, however, rely on the R-77-1 and Cold War era R-27, which are far from outstanding by 2020's standards. The American fleet relies primarily on AIM-120 missiles, with some new units having begun to introduce the new AIM-260. A large portion of the fleet still relies on older AIM-120 variants and on even the AIM-7 Sparrow from the Cold War era. 
Russian air-to-air -air missiles have the advantage of being far more intensively combat-tested, namely in the Ukrainian theater. Despite on average using shorter-ranged missiles, US pilots have the advantage of many more hours in the air for training every year. Looking to support aircraft, this is where the American advantage is perhaps most significant. American reconnaissance capabilities are also very significantly greater, although many of the Air Force's top recon assets have been reassigned to the Space Force. Looking to air defense systems, in America these are deployed under the Army rather than the Air Force. The Patriots' capabilities are relatively limited, and its combat record has left much to be desired. The large size of the American fighter fleet has led to a limited investment in ground-based anti-aircraft capabilities. The backbone of Russia's air defense network is formed by a staggering over 60 battalions of S-400 long-range systems. These are widely considered the most capable in the world, and have double the range of the Patriots. They are supported by a wide range of complementary systems such as S-500s and S-300s. The S-500 has triple the range of the Patriot and can shoot down satellites and space-flying aircraft. The Russian ground-based anti-aircraft missile network is several times more capable than that of the United States and is focused on very heavily at the expense of fighter aviation. If the cost of 60-plus S-400s alone had been invested purchasing fighters, it could have bought over 500 Su-35s or close to 1,000 fighters from lower-end classes. This doesn't account for all other types of systems, including S-500s and S-300 V-4s, which are more expensive than the S-400. Thus, if the Russian and American air forces did go to war, Russian ground-based systems would shoulder the large majority of air defense efforts, with aircraft playing a more minor role. America's massive network of overseas air bases, combined with a huge tanker fleet, mean its forces are much better suited to long-range power projection. The Russian Air Force, by contrast, was built primarily for air defense and has much more limited offensive capabilities. We hope you enjoyed this brief summary video. Please be sure to subscribe and leave any comments you have below.